Welcome, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, maybe even good night. This is Dawn Goldstein and I am going to read Charlotte's Web chapter by chapter. This is a novel by E.B. White. That's the author of Stuart Little and the pictures are by Garth Williams. Look at that pig. It looks like a happy pig, doesn't it? You're going to meet him soon. These are the chapter pages. The table of contents helps us find other pages quickly. The name of chapter one is called Before Breakfast. And you can look at the picture and tell something strange is happening before breakfast. Hmm. Let's read to find out what happened and who these two characters are. Where's Papa going with that ax? Said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast. Out to the hog house, replied Mrs. Arable. Some pigs were born last night. I don't see why he needs an ax, continued Fern, who was only eight. Hmm. So that's a nice thing to know. The little girl is eight. Well, said her mother, one of the pigs is a runt, very small and weak, and it will never amount to anything. Well, if you don't know what a runt is, we can tell from right here, whatever it is, it's very small and weak. Whew. I'm gonna make those words green. So your father has decided to do away with it. Do away with it, shrieked Fern? You mean kill it? Just because it's smaller than the others? Mrs. Arable put a pitcher of cream on the table. Don't yell, Fern, she said. Your father is right. The pig would probably die anyway. So now we know what's going on in this picture. A little pig has been born and he's very small and the father wasn't gonna do anything very nice with that ax. Fern pushed a chair out of the way and ran outdoors. The grass was wet and the earth smelled of springtime. What does springtime smell like where you live? Where I live, it smells like flowers and fresh cut grass. Fern's sneakers were sopping by the time she caught up with her father. Please don't kill it, she sobbed. It's unfair. Mr. Arable stopped walking. Fern, he said gently, you will have to learn to control yourself. Control myself, yelled Fern. This is a matter of life and death. And you talk about controlling myself? Tears ran down her cheeks and she took hold of the ax and tried to pull it out of her father's hand. Fern, said Mr. Arable, I know more about raising a litter of pigs than you do. A weakling makes trouble. Now run along. Weakling makes trouble. Hmm, I wonder what her father means by that. But it's unfair, cried Fern. The pig couldn't help being born small, could it? If I had been born very small at birth, would you have killed me? Mr. Arable smiled. Certainly not, he said, looking down at his daughter with love. But this is different. A little girl is one thing. A little runty pig is another. I see no difference, replied Fern, still hanging on to the act. So this whole sentence here tells us something about Fern. That's a very brave girl to grab an ax, wouldn't you think? <laughs> and then she says, this is the most terrible case of injustice I ever heard of. Now you might not know this big word here, injustice. But sometimes you have to keep reading and 
that helps your brain figure out what that word possibly means. So this is the most terrible case of injustice I ever heard of. Let's keep reading. A queer look came over John Arable's face. He seemed almost ready to cry himself. Now, crying yourself means that you're probably sad. So this injustice word must have something to do with sadness. And it's so sad that the papa, the dad would cry. And I don't know about you, I don't see moms and dads cry that much or grownups. So this must be a very serious word. We're gonna talk more about it later. All right, he said, you go back to the house and I will bring the rent when I come in. I'll let you start in on a bottle like a baby and you'll see what trouble a pig can be. So now her father has decided she gets to keep the pig and treat it like a little baby. Oh my goodness. I don't know about you, but that sounds very, very exciting, right? Do you agree? Yes. So much fun. Can you imagine? Let's keep reading. When Mr. Arable returned to the house half an hour later, he carried a carton under his arm. Fern was upstairs changing her sneakers. Remember, because they were wet. The kitchen table was set for breakfast. Remember, because this was all happening before breakfast. And the room smelled of coffee, bacon, damp plaster, and wood smoke from the stove. Mm -mm -mm. All of that smells really delicious, except for the plaster part. <laughs> Put it on her chair, said Mrs. Arable. Mr. Arable set the carton down at Fern's place. Then he walked to the sink and washed his hands and dried them on the roller towel. Fern came slowly down the stairs. Her eyes were red from crying. As she approached her chair, the carton wobbled and there was a scratching noise. Fern looked at her father and lifted the lid of the carton. There, inside, looking up at her, was the newborn pig. It was a white one. The morning light shone through its ears, turning them pink. So I'm making a lot of words turn green, and we'll talk about that later, but I don't want you to forget them. He's yours, said Mr. Arable, saved from an untimely death. And may the good Lord forgive me for this foolishness. I wonder what he means by foolishness. Sometimes fooling is funny, but I don't know if Papa's saying anything funny this time. Let's find out. Fern couldn't take her eyes off the tiny pig. Oh. She whispered, oh, look at him. He's absolutely perfect. She closed the carton carefully. First, she kissed her father. Then she kissed her mother. Then she opened the lid again, lifted the pig out and held it against her cheek. At this moment, her brother Avery came into the room. Avery was 10. So now we've met another character. We have Mr. Arable and Miss Arable and Fern. And now we have Fern's brother, Avery. And he is 10 years old. He was heavily armed, an air rifle in one hand and a wooden dagger in the other. This word armed, is a big word that means he had weapons on him. Hmm, a 10 year old with weapons. This story happened a long time ago when those things would have been normal. No 10 year old today walks around with rifles or daggers. I know, silly, right? But this story happened a long time ago. What's that, he demanded, what's Fern got? 
She's got a guest for breakfast, said Mrs. Arable. Wash your hands and face, Avery. Let's see it, said Avery, setting his gun down. So Avery is carrying a gun and a dagger. I don't know if anyone knows what a dagger is, but it's like a knife. We're going to see in a minute exactly what Avery looks like. You call that miserable thing a pig? That's a fine specimen of a pig. It's no bigger than a white rat. Ooh, here's another big word. But you don't even know, have to know what it means to get the idea of what he's saying. That's a fine specimen of a pig. It's no bigger than a white rat. Well, that must be a pretty small pig because rats are not that big. Look, I made a rhyme. It was in due time. <laughs> okay, so here's Avery. Woo! He does not look like a happy boy. He's got a sad frown on his face and look at his eyebrows. They're all scrunched up and there's that rifle and dagger. And now we know what that means to be heavily armed because he has two weapons and some people don't have any or one and some this 10 year old has two and we need to figure out why, right? Wash up and eat your breakfast, Avery, said his mother. The school bus will be along in half an hour. Can I have a, a pig too, Pop? Asked Avery. No, I only distribute pigs to early risers, Mr. Arable said. Fern was up at daylight trying to rid the world of injustice. As a result, she now has a pig. A small one, to be sure, but nevertheless a pig. It just shows what can happen if a person gets out of bed promptly. Let's eat. If you don't know what promptly means, it means early and on time. <laughs> and whoa, there are a lot of big words in this story that's meant for kids. But one of the good things about big words is all the words around it usually help us figure out what those big words mean. And sometimes we just have to keep reading. So I only distribute pigs to early risers. What Mr. Air Avery, Air, sorry, excuse me. What Mr. Arable is saying is I only hand out pigs to early risers. But Fern couldn't eat. We're going to start the last paragraph on this page, page 11. But Fern couldn't eat until her pig had a drink of milk. Mrs. Arable found a baby's nursing bottle and a rubber nipple. She poured warm milk into the bottle, fitted the nipple over the top, and handed it to Fern. Give him breakfast, she said. Now, what a difference between Brother Avery. Ooh, he's not looking too happy, is he? No, no, no and Sister Fern. This looks like a great way to start the school day to me. I would love to have a baby bottle and a baby pig. That's a dream. I don't know about you, wouldn't you love to do that? Yeah, me too. Let's keep reading. A minute later, Fern was seated on the floor in the corner of the kitchen with her infant between her knees teaching it to suck from the bottle. The pig, although tiny, had a good appetite and caught on quickly. The school bus honked from the road. Run, commanded Mrs. Arable, taking the pig from Fern and slipping a donut into her hand. Avery grabbed his gun and another donut. The children ran out to the road and climbed into the bus. Fern took no notice of others in the bus. She just sat and stared out of the window, thinking what a blissful world it was and how lucky she was to have the entire charge of a pig. By the time the bus reached school, Fern had named her pet, selecting the most beautiful name she could think of. 
Its name is Wilbur, she whispered to herself. She was still thinking about the pig when the teacher said, Fern, what is the capital of Pennsylvania? Wilbur, replied Fern dreamily. The pupils giggled, Fern blushed. That is the end of chapter one. If you're following along in your own book, we did a lot of reading today. And we're going to talk about where we're going to go in the next chapter. But before we do that, we have some activities to do about this chapter. So I'll see you soon. Bye. Or maybe good night or good morning. I don't know which one it is. You can tell.